Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to do an updated video for the Rococo live stream with real-time retargeting into Unreal 5.3. So this is just an update video from a previous one that I did. Um, there are some changes that were made to the new release of the plugin and uh, you'll need to know this for your to work properly. Uh, so first thing I did, I just added this asset. It's a pirate character um, from the marketplace. And I've just got the third person template open in 5.3. So here I'm gonna just grab the the mesh, the skeletal mesh here. Drag him into the scene. So this workflow right now works with Mixamo as well as the UE skeleton. Um, I yeah, uh, at least that's the only ones I've tested so far, but theoretically it should work with anything that can go into Rococo Studio. Um, so before we get further in here, I'm gonna open up Rococo Studio. And let's just use this scene here. Okay, so we've got the Rococo scene. Let me just remove this. And what I did here is I've got my pirate character in here. Um, so if you didn't know, you can actually just come here, right click, asset actions, export. And that would allow you to export the skeletal mesh of whatever character you're using. Okay, with that asset, I then came into Rocco Studio and right here under characters you can just add your um, your character and you know these types of skeletons are supported like I said I've only tested this with Mixamo and the uh, Unreal skeleton so I, I don't know for sure about these other ones but theoretically it should uh, work as long as you can import it into here so that's what I have right here this pirate character and you can see you know doing his thing. I'm going to come over here to live stream, check that on. And and one thing, you know, you got to make sure that your um, this port number is matching to what's in Unreal, okay? Uh, by default, it should already, but just in case yours is not working, just check that. Okay, I've got this checked. It's streaming. Move that aside. Come back into Unreal. Make sure you have the Rococo uh, plugin installed. You can download this from the marketplace. Okay, Rococo Studio Live, and if you don't have this yet, you should have the Live Link uh, plugin as well. That's what we're going to use here, Live Link. Uh, okay, if you don't have this open, you're going to go Windows, Virtual Production, Live Link. Click on Source, and you'll see a drop down Rococo Studio Source. Select that, and you can see I already have my data streaming in. Um, ignore this one. This is really the one that I'm after, the pirate uh, demo. So, and you know what? Let me change my name back to that. Okay, this is gonna be important in a second here. Okay. So now I'm gonna go back to my scene and Right here, I'm going to create an animation blueprint. So right click on it, create, anim blueprint. And, you know, you can rename it if you want. Pirate. Okay. Open that up. Here, you're going to right click. Make sure you're in the anim graph. <coughs> If you're uh, not in it, you can go right here. Live link pose. It's a live link pose node. Connect that up. Live link subject name. You're gonna select the mesh of your, your avatar. Okay, make sure you're not choosing that one. You're gonna choose the avatar that you wanna stream. 
And just to note, this workflow is so that you, you're actually streaming the actual avatar. You're not streaming the Rococo data. Uh, you're not streaming the Rococo Newton character. You're streaming the actual avatar. And the reason why I'm going to do this is then you can use real-time retargeting in Rococo Studio and see it reflected in Unreal in real time. Okay, make sure you compile. And this is the thing I'm talking about. You're going to see him. He's all twisted up. Okay, you're going to be like, what's going on here? Don't worry. This always happens. Uh, it's, it has to do with the way that Unreal uses Z up and you know a couple other rotational um, settings that are a little bit different um, from what's like the standard. So we're just going to go into Live Link. Here, let me just put this up here. Go into the Live Link tab, and you're going to click on Studio here. And then we've added some settings for this exact purpose. Okay, you're going to check on this. Use Rotation Order Z. Y, X. Check that on. And you know what? Let's look, see what happens. So once I did that, the character now, he's not twisted anymore, but he's like on his side. Right? That's because we have one more thing to do. On the hip pre rotation, you're just going to put 90 in here on the um, X axis. So that basically flips him over. Okay, and, and you know, depending on your character or your skeleton, you might do something different. Uh, but for the Unreal skeleton, this is how you would fix that. Okay. For Mixamo, if you have a Mixamo character, um, make sure you check this box, Trim Namespaces, because with Mixamo, when you import into Unreal, it um, changes the namespaces. That's why you have to have this checked on for Mixamo. And I believe the same things um, for Mixamo as well. Okay, but with this, our character looks like he's looking fine. If I go back into Rococo Studio and I just play the animation, and I see it's streaming. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is this means it's working. And down here, for your actual scene, you have your character, and he's not doing it because you're not using the animation blueprint yet. Okay, so you know with your skeletal mesh selected. You're going to choose the animation blueprint that you just made earlier. Okay, now, and now if I click simulate, let me go to simulate here, you'll see this is streaming. Okay? And check this out. So I, I'm just doing this in Rococo Studio. The real time retargeting is if you go into your filters here. And now, here, let me get a better view. Change the shoulder height. Look in the Unreal Viewfinder um, as well. See how it's changing the shoulder height? Shoulder shift. I want it more forward. A lot of times with some of these skeletons, I have to adjust the arm. Spread it out a little bit so his arms aren't clipping into his body. You can change that arm as well. So you can do a lot of retargeting inside Rococo Studio and then just have it stream directly into Unreal. Okay, so all of this, all of these settings will be reflected in real time here. And um, yeah, if you're not that familiar with Unreal yet, you might ask, okay, well now what? How, how do I get this into an animation um, sequence, right? You can basically just use Take Recorder. So if you go to Windows, um, cinematics, open up Take Recorder, and whether your character is a blueprint or, or just a skeletal mesh, you just drag that into, wait, hold on, Take Recorder, you want to have this little thing in, drag that in here, and now, you know, I would make sure this is on, and then I would play my animation, or if you're doing it in real time, you can just start you know, acting it out. So start the mocap, and then I would just hit record here. Or actually, I'll probably hit record and then hit the mocap. Now it's recording everything that this character is doing. Okay, and you know, if you have a V cam or something, you can actually find different angles and and do all that. So now I just hit stop. 
now. Oh, and now uh, Unreal crashes. Great. Okay, so Unreal crashed, but luckily, um, and I actually didn't even save, but luckily it restored. So once I stop recording with Take Recorder, the scenes automatically get recorded into your cinematics folder. So cinematics takes, and then you'll see it, it's dated. Okay, so if I open up this level sequence, it actually creates a level sequence for you. So you see, this character right here, this is actually from our recording. And then, you know, you can start dropping in the cameras and then, well, make sure this is unlocked. Then you start dropping in your cameras and do all that. Um, but sometimes that sequencer actually glitches out a little bit. So I still recommend going into the sub scenes and then you have your animation right here. This is the animation sequence that got recorded. This is um, what we did earlier. And then from here you can just, you know, go into your regular sequencer workflow, um, attach this animation or clean this up. You can do some animation cleanup if you had to. Uh, but this is just a very quick and iterative way to get animation into Unreal using the live stream method so that you can very quickly block out scenes and get some temporary animation in. And then when you're ready to actually use that animation, let's say you like it, then you can go into Rococo Studio and, and actually export that clip that we just played back. You, you just go export and then export this as a FBX, okay? Um, for now, you have to use Unreal Engine 4, then retarget to UE5, but then you would have your, you know, finalized animation. And the reason why I would do the export is because sometimes um, when you're live streaming, you could get some drop frames on that data transfer. That's why I say this method is really just for kind of like blocking out your scenes and getting animation in very quickly. Uh, and who knows, maybe it's good enough for you to use, um, but see for yourself. All right, thanks.